Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Dane Potter with Go Engineer, and today I'm going to be showing you how to publish from SolidWorks Composer to various formats like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, 3D PDF, and HTML. The most common but most misunderstood format would probably be Microsoft Word because Microsoft Word has a lot of power within it that is underused. And I'm going to show you how to use that power to your advantage. We're going to use SolidWorks Composer to publish high resolution images. There are no special tools needed to make updates to your Microsoft Word, which is common images. The only thing is you need to save your files ahead of time. We're going to use SolidWorks Composer for that. It's as easy as one, two, three. SolidWorks Composer also uses powerful tools like ActiveX to enhance and publish your SolidWorks controls onto your Microsoft PowerPoint documents, your 3D PDFs, and HTML interactive content. I can highlight my parts, go to different views. If I have different configurations, I can show them. Today, our colleagues and technicians have devices that empower the use of things like SolidWorks Composer and enhance our technical documentation and representations. So why not use that to our advantage? And some of those things are going to be what I'm showing you today. So let's see how to do it. The first thing that we need to be aware of is what we're actually publishing. What are we actually saving? Will the colleague or customer have rights to view what I'm publishing? Let's take a look. We'll simply need to go to Save As and take a look at our Rights Manager. See what's available to us versus what we want to actually publish. Things like the Digger tool. Do we want it or do we not want it to be seen? Our trees, on demand, not on demand. Do I want them to see the bomb? I'm going to hit save. And we have saved our rights into the document. So we have the peace of mind knowing that we're going to publish the correct data needed. Now what I want to do is produce high quality images so that way we can put those into Microsoft Word and produce nice, clean Microsoft Word instructions. All we need to do is go to high resolution image. Since we have multiple views, why not harness that? Go to your multiple tab, select on views, make sure this is selected. Let the software do the work for you. I'm going to be saving my images as 300 DPI. One little nice tool is the compute button here. This will show you what size approximately each image will be stored as. You simply just hit save as. Make sure your location is correct. Our images are now created. The workflow used to insert SolidWorks Composer images is very much the same as you would normally do to place images into Microsoft Word. I'm going to go to Insert, Picture, select the image that I would like to insert, except I'm going to select Insert and Link. Change the size to whatever I would want it to be. Move it around the page like you would any other image. Going to put in a few more images here. I'm creating this document from scratch because I believe it's important that you understand how to do something from scratch, not just how to update it.
insert the parts list here. Insert my motor detail. And my safety guide. We now have a functional Microsoft Word instructional technical documentation piece. Here's the cool part. All you need to do is go to File and Edit Links to Files to update those images with new images from ECN's design changes and so forth. We now have a design change. I want to update that image. You just go to the image itself, say change source. I want to find the source file that I want to update. Say open. And see my design change. Pretty slick, right? So if you have any text on your document, anything that you have set, none of that's changed. The image is updated seamlessly. Next up, weighing in at paperless, we have Microsoft PowerPoint. To start, you will need to either create or open up a Microsoft PowerPoint document. We need certain tools to embed ActiveX controls. To turn those on, we will need to go to File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and find your Developer tab. Make sure that's checked. Select OK. Once your Developer tab is visible, come over to More Controls, select More Controls, Select Composer Player ActiveX, hit OK. Now we're going to select the canvas to be displayed for our ActiveX content. Now that's just the canvas. Now we need to point the canvas to where the content actually lives. I'm going to select Bench Grinder, select Open. We also have additional properties that we can select. Select OK. Now we can edit what it actually looks like and how it functions. We can see our markers, our views, our toolbars. I can move to the next view, play my animations, see how it looks. Do I want it smooth, smooth with outline? All kinds of things here, as if you were in SolidWorks Composer Player. Does the customer or colleague like what they see here on screen? I can save an image on the fly. Make it full screen, make it nice and streamlined. Using the power of SolidWorks Composer, you can do many things, present many different images or animations on the fly. SolidWorks Composer takes your documentation to the next level and puts the power in your hands. Next up, we have 3D PDFs. The first thing we need to be aware of is what are we saving the 3D PDF as and what are we opening? the 3D PDF with. We're saving the 3D PDF with SolidWorks Composer. We're opening the 3D PDF with whatever program that we have installed. I personally use Adobe Acrobat Reader. 
with enable protected mode at startup, it actually blocks the content. So I had to uncheck that. So go into your reader, go into security, and make sure that you know what your options are there. I'm going to close Adobe and go back over to SolidWorks Composer. To produce a 3D PDF, we simply just need to go to File, Publish, PDF. Under the Embedded 3D File Options, we want the most content possible. So I'm going to select SMG, Enhanced Content, make sure I'm in the right location, and hit Save. I have now created my 3D PDF. Once I open my 3D PDF, all I need to do is click on the embedded content and it's completely available to us. Just like the PowerPoint, it's the same content. I can right click, turn toolbars on and off, play animations, make full screen, skip views, view my preferences as if I were in Composer itself. Save an image on the fly. Many things we can do here. Next up is HTML. I'm going to pop back over to SolidWorks Composer. HTML is powerful because I have a device or a computer with Internet Explorer already installed. I don't have to install another program. I'm going to use that engine to take my interactive content, put it into something I already have, and view my technical documentation and interactive content. How cool is that? To produce a HTML document, you just need to come to File, Publish, Again, when you're saving as any Composer document, make sure you know what you're saving. Go to your Rights Manager, check that out. HTML output, I would suggest saving as each one of these different layouts and see which one you like the best. I'm going to select Full, hit Save. I have now saved an HTML document. Pretty easy, right? When you are in your browser, all you need to do is open up your HTML document through your browser. Make sure that you allow the blocked content. One thing you might want to be aware of is through your tools, turn on your standard toolbar. Now I can come in and turn on any toolbars that I'd like. And then from there, customizing my embedded content. I hope you've enjoyed this webinar. Again, my name is Dane Potter. Keep your eye out for more videos and webinars from Go Engineer. Thank you.